they're my little baby Austin, my Austin kids. We yeah, miss you, so. Dad. Oh, yeah, I'm what not, a time! I'm not, gonna, I, I'm not gonna call you that, but yeah, I miss you. I think I think about my days in Austin. Right. Oh, I miss it so. You Do know. you? You look back fondly. Well, look, I don't know if it was just because I didn't, I wasn't working, and it was just like you wake up. Every, it just felt like I was on vacation. You're on vacation. And I guess, yeah. and I guess I kind of was, but like being at your house was like being at a resort. You know, where like the only thing you really look for, like you have the big thing of the day is like eating, you know, like we've got a plan to go to this place to eat. You know, that's always the best. <laughs> Every and day until has then, one I'll special place. Pool. Yeah. Right. You didn't, I didn't get go in with the pool. The pool. I got in the so pool once. Boring. I don't at like nighttime. Yeah. I got in the pool at night. Pool? Me and Rob had a, a romantic I little know. night swim. I know. Then I put the hot tub for you. Yeah. What? What? Yeah. Like that Saturday during the day, when we were all in the pool and the boys were throwing the football. Like, why didn't you just pop in? You're too busy talking to my cousin's boyfriend. I had my feet in Bradford. and I was talking to Bradford the whole time. I felt like I had a job to be social because your cousin and Bradford were like on that side. And I, and I didn't want to just, ma- I hate when people come to my house and, and they don't know anyone. They don't know anyone. And like, see, I didn't worry about it because she's great at that. Like she's, she's she can talk to anybody. She's super chill. She's so cool. Yeah. So I figured and she would, like, would not me. leave her dude alone. Like she would be conscious. She's like a very aware human where she would never just leave him alone with someone to talk to for three hours. So I didn't worry about them because I was like, they'll be great. But Bradford is a super confident guy. He can talk to anybody. Bradford, if you're <laughs> if you're listening to this, I miss you, pal. And please reach out. You know, I'd love to, I'd love to continue this. Yeah, I'd love to continue the friendship. Um, no, such that. a good time. Yeah, I should have gone in the water more. But like to be honest, <laughs> even when I go to the beach, I'm usually just sitting on the sand and maybe I'll like water sports is it's like getting in the water is a whole thing for me. You're a sand What's guy. the trauma behind that? I don't know. I did almost drown as a kid, but like, really? I, don't, I don't think about that when I go into a pool. I'm just like, ah, uh, then I'm, sure. I'm going to go. Is it self-consciousness? In. Is it like, uh, is it about your looks? <sighs> no, <laughs> no, that's a good question. You know, it is a good question. <laughs> Why don't you get in the pool, Cass? Is it your looks? <laughs> yeah, there is a part of me that's Jesus like, oh, I haven't Christ. worked out. I haven't worked out in months. No, thank you, Jamie. That's actually spot on. Thanks for honing in on that insecurity. Yeah, when when there's like 20 people at Jamie's house for a birthday and everyone is in the water, is the reason you don't join and have fun is because of your looks? Yeah. <laughs> oh, damn, cool. Jamie. No, she's Holy a cool girl. Shit. You she's... should hear what she was telling her kids upstairs. If you ever lie to mom, you're going to get bit by bugs. Holy wow. shit. That sounds like no, a lie I mean, in its it own. It wasn't like that. <laughs> what happened to you in the last week? Did you do turn crazy. evil? We left the, her and just everything. Did Vince coming. McMahon tell you got to turn heel this week? <laughs> 41 is, it's not all it's cracked up to be. She's spicy at 41. Yeah, yeah. I good. We like it. We like it. Had a good, had a great time. Uh, spent some quality time with Cutter. You know, yeah. we got to you run errands. You said something to him that really meant a lot to him. And I meant it 1000%. He, no, he mentioned it to me. Yeah, he texted like four me about or it. five times. Like it really, really meant a lot to him. That was really nice of you. Yeah, you know what? When I said it, I was like, I didn't think about why that might resonate with him. I just saw him do a thing with Bo, and I'm like, dude, you're such a good dad. Like it was just such a natural yeah. thing, you know? Yeah, but that's I actually didn't realize until this moment that that was, that was an insecurity. Yeah, well, that uh, yeah, that took a while. No, that that was a sensitivity of his. Yeah, I didn't think about didn't, it either. Until, I didn't think he uh, yeah. doubted if he was a good dad or not. Mm. And sometimes having somebody completely. Just observe you, know, you for a few days and then provide. Uh, yes. And then provide feedback. like objective feedback, like where you weren't looking for this person to give you any validation. Like it came out of left field. Yeah. It was a very genuine moment that you were commenting on. that would probably felt really authentic to him too. Like. I'm yeah. sure it was actually a really good moment in parenting that he was proud of, but I didn't realize it was a sensitivity of his. So I'm g- grateful to you too, that you showed me that. Cause I'm telling him more that he's a good dad. Cause I didn't realize he needed to hear it. Yeah. 
No, I mean, you, you both are like unassuming in your parenting, but you're both stellar parent, like way above Aww. average. That's parents. so nice. And it's so I fun mean, to be around people like that. Cause then you. I'll go like, Oh, I can just do that. I can take that uh-huh. part of it. I won't hit the kids like Jamie does, but I'll, you know, yeah. I'll talk them up and tell them they're little champions. I mean, it does work. Yeah. <laughs> Jamie, can you tell the story of, of what happened? So you were in Bo's room. <laughs> Okay, so we well, first of all, let's preface this by saying we know that I have a really big problem with lying. Sure. Like I like with we Bo know lying or just yes, in general. Yes, you, you, like yeah, yeah. I just it, it it to me. So what I realized tonight. So basically, I was putting Bo to bed. He was drawing me a picture saying "I love you." By the way, because I told, I was like, do some art until I put your brothers down. What a Good. Well, I appreciate but, that. Drawing, I go to his room and then I'm like going to just tidy up. And I took his little trash can out from under his desk and it was filled with the fruit that he had been telling me he had eaten in each morning while he would get his <laughs> iPad time on Saturday and Sunday you didn't even and then bring the me back an empty thing. So he would dump, dump the fruit in that garbage. So I was like, and then told me that he ate it. So I was like, what is this? He said, yeah. huh? well, I'm like, what is this? Is this your fruit that you told me you ate each morning? Well, you looked at me and said, hey, mom, here, mommy, I finished my fruit, knowing that you dumped it in your garbage. I was like, how does it make you feel a lie to me? Because he would get his iPad after he ate the fruit, right? Or like, Well, I was like, it. yeah, part of it was like, can I put my iPad alone? I'm like, yes, just go eat this fruit, sit in your bed. You yeah. can have an hour to yourself. Oh. Like, that's like my, th- it's like, I know you're eating some good, healthy food. I also am trying to be so vi- vigilant and a hard ass about my kids eating fruit and vegetables before they eat anything else, because I struggled so hard in my life to learn how to eat well. And I really just want them to just, as they grow, not even question whether to eat well, because they've only eaten well. Okay. Right. Back story of that and why I'm so passionate right. about it. Anyway. So this is all your big things in one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. This is a, this is a trigger like, fest. <laughs> and I'm, I, I was like, that's it. Go brush your teeth. You're done. Um, you can lay with me. No, good night. I love you. But you know what, Bo? I was like, you know what I wish happened? That because you put that fruit in that pail and lied to me, cockroaches would have come in to get that and bitten you at night. Whoa. And I said that to him. I did. <laughs> and then <laughs> and then I went outside to have like my reflective moment. Rob's on his way. And then he walks out like 20 minutes later because he probably heard Rob come in. Like he was in his room, not sleeping yet. And he came out and I was like, you know what, dude? The reason I really hate lying so much is I can remember when I was young and I would lie to my mom or to like someone and it was because I didn't like them and I just didn't want to tell them the truth. It was like I never did anything bad, but it was like almost like a revenge on my part when I was young. It was like a rebellion and it represents something really, really negative to me. I mean, lying is bad, but it just does. And I was trying, I was like, it makes me feel like you don't like me or you don't trust me. And those are the two things that like I care the most about as your mom is I want you to like me and trust me. And then I was just basically like, I was like, and I told a really big lie in my life and my life sucked for a really long time. And he's like, what? And I was like, I didn't tell people I had, had MS for 16 years. And he was like, why? And I was like, because I don't know. I didn't know how I felt about it yet. I didn't want people to think about it. When they looked at me, I was embarrassed by it. I thought I did something wrong to have it. I don't know. There was a lot of reasons, but then I lied about it for so long. And then anytime somebody asked me, I would say I had something wrong with my back or I hurt my knee or something happened to my foot. I was like, and it sucked. I had to keep lying over and over again to people I really cared about. And then all this having, always having to make up another lie. I was like, it's a terrible way to live. And I was like, so if there's one thing I am not going to raise. It's a liar. Ooh. Yeah. Then you went and to the that store, is, that you is bought my a one microphone, act play. you brought it home, and then you dropped it. Thank you. Well, what did he say about it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Like you, somewhat you, mocking me. You know how obviously. I knew that he was in trouble because he came out of his room when I was like there for like a couple of minutes and he was like, <sighs> And I was like, are you pretending to yawn? Like, what are you doing? And he was like, he's like trying to like blend in with the furniture. Yeah. And he was yeah. like, he just kept his mouth. And I was like, dude, people don't yawn for that long. Like he was just trying to do, he's trying to be like nonchalant. Oh That's God. so funny. I was, you I say was that. So, I was so like that as a kid too. I thought I was so smooth. You know, what's really sucking about 
him lately is like, he is exposing me so hard to myself. Like mm-hmm. things that he does that I did that I was like, fuck, everybody yeah. knew I was, I was bullshitting. Wow, yeah. I thought I was the fucking coolest and mm-hmm. I could, he's me. I'm so embarrassed. He's so funny. <laughs> he's, he, he didn't one of those like stealth F bomb drops when it was just me outside one day. Oh yeah. I don't know if he has done that with, with he you did? recently, What did he Rob. say? I forget yeah, what he, he said. But back in L.A. Yeah, and he did yeah, one. Yeah, real young, yeah. And I forget what he said. He's like, something, this fucking thing, you know? And he came out, and I'm like, what'd you say? And then he said it again, but without the F-bomb. I'm like, that's not what you said the first time. And he's like, what do you mean? <laughs> and he was like, no, I didn't. And I was like, oh, okay. So I did. I just didn't want to feed into it. You should have yeah. been like, liar. Now bugs are going to bite you. Yeah. <laughs> but he's a he's a little sneak. I was like, what know? did mommy say? And he turns into a bug and starts chasing Bo around. Bo. Right. He was like, he was testing me to see how cool I was. Yeah. You know? say, like, yeah that's how like, I felt. Oh, what's, what's Cass going to let me get away with? Yeah. Yeah. He was like, you know, this fucking bitch doesn't know I'm throwing those <gasps> bananas in the garbage can in my room. And you're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> it's even worse. It was apple, mango, and grapes. Like, oh, ew. Mango. Like, mango. Hey, and they were days old in there? Two, a day or two? Yeah. That's fun, man. Do you think I got through to him tonight? Do you think I did it? I think well, the yes ma'am was totally being like, okay. I think it's important for you to tell him why yeah. that bothers you and have it come from like a place I thought where I he, did. Yeah, that's no, great. I, that's what I'm saying. It's like, oh. I think that's cool that you did that. <laughs> I thought that was your advice for me for no, next you're time. On I was it, like, dude. wait, you're, I did. You're all over my shit today. <laughs> no, I'm not. I was asking a question. I don't, no, I, I, I don't think, I think you are so handsome. And so <laughs> I swear. I was like, is she going to say this right now? <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. Wow. You forgot all about that, Amy. <laughs> you were <laughs> unreal. We had moved past That's it. Yeah, we moved past, we, kind of, we sent each other a note in the Zoom chat saying, let's not bring up Kasim's looks again for we the did? rest of the pod. We did? Oh. Yeah, we've never done anything like that. <laughs> I'd like to think you guys are writing notes about me. <laughs> we have little me. post-its right under here that we're passing to each other. Mm, we have a Discord. It's just me and Jamie talking yeah. about you. <laughs> guys, I, I don't know how we keep hello tushy as a sponsor because every single one of our listeners should have one and then right. there should be no more people to buy hello tushy unless there's just a few new ones here oh that's true new new listeners thanks so yeah. guess yeah. hey new listeners do you know what tushy is so tushy is the modern bidet company and guess what they are celebrating 6 9 day june 9th by offering yeah, tushy dude. classic bidets for 69 dollars when you purchase two or more what is a tushy okay it is a Modern, no electricity, no plumber, no special person needed bidet that you can easily attach to your toilet. All you have to go to is hellotushy.com. You are saving money on toilet paper. You are getting your butt clean in a way that only 6 9 day would be able to know about. Wow. Yeah, and you guys, the one thing I wish I had was a, a tushy in my guest bathroom. So uh, do yourselves a favor and just take advantage of the deal. Get two tushy bidets. Give the gift of a clean butt on June 9th, 6 9. Go to hellotushy.com slash pajama and enter promo code 6 9 to get 30% off. Hellotushy.com slash pajama. Keep it clean. Look, I've I always say when it comes to your health, when it comes to your body, no one is a better advocate for yourself than you are. No one knows your body, no one knows your needs better than you do. So then you need to put in your own hands, finding and booking a doctor who is right for you. And it doesn't also need to be a terrible experience when you do that. You need to find a doctor that can take your insurance, understand your needs, and be available when you want to see them. So ZocDoc is the answer because it is make it pain-free. They have amazing doctors that they put you in touch with. It is a free app that shows you doctors who are paid 
get reviewed. It will take your insurance, like I said, and are available when you need them. You can read up on all the local doctors. They are all verified with patient reviews. You can see what real humans had to say about their visits. Find the doctor that's right for you. Every month, millions of people use ZocDoc, and I am one of them. It is my go-to whenever I need to find, especially in a new city, and book a doctor. Go to ZocDoc.com, that is Z-O-C-D-O-C.com slash pajama and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then start your search for top rated doctors today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C.com slash pajama, ZocDoc.com slash pajama. Oh, well, then that's fine. And then, you know, when we were there, Jack, Jack is like, He's also like the way you've been working with Jack. I've never seen anything like it. I, I don't know if you guys are just from the future or if like there's a way like you guys have learned to parent, but I've I've never seen a lot of help. A kid get physical. And then like in my head, I'm like, let me beat the shit out of this kid, you know, but I'm like, oh, no, like that's obviously not not the right way to do it. But you just get it's like almost like you get calmer and calmer and, until you like, you know, on the 11th time, you're like, I'm getting upset. Yep. You, it's it's taken a lot of work. Okay. Yeah, this it's has crazy. Taken but kudos to you. I mean, it's really well, impressive. Well, to any to parent see. out there that really feels like they're struggling and they're snapping at their toddlers, and it's really, 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 really fucking hard. You could advance all the way to telling them that bugs should bite them. For yes, lying to you. there's a you place get, to go you from can there. Get there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there's yeah. places I to really go. Are. But I, but meaning like, give yourself a little grace. It's also a skill you're needing to learn. Like this mm. level of patience is a way you have never been tested in your entire life before. And just as there's brand new and learning how to act in the world, you are brand new to this situation and this feeling, and it is not fun and it is really fucking hard and it takes a lot of work. So give yourself some grace because I needed to. And the moment I did, I really just like slowed down and you realize as a parent, like you were saying, the calmer you get, you, the more power you actually start to feel. You feel so much less power when you're yelling at your kid and thinking you have authority than when you are staying calm and they're still losing your shit. Like you have never felt power like that. Yeah. I know what you're thinking, babe. Oh, you know what I'm, I'm thinking like, yeah, Thanos was always very calm in the Avengers movies. That's what I was thinking. I knew it. I knew you were tying it to, to that. You knew it was tied to the something verse, <laughs> Marvel verse, metaverse, yeah. DC verse. I, you know what I wanted to ask you guys? Like what, what your like growing up in your house. Cause I see like bedtime around here and what it's like, like what was bedtime like for you guys when you were growing up? Because for me, there was no such thing. Like when you're like, I, I think you put Jack to bed one day at like six thirty. Oh yeah. He went to bed at six 45 tonight. That's crazy. Was, well, you, you just know, like, Keeping him up will literally only make everyone's life more miserable. So how do you put him to bed? You say, come on, we're going in. You know, you start to see your kid, you have a window. You've got about a 10 minute window of you seeing them getting genuinely tired. And within that time, you can actually convince them to go to sleep and they won't fight you. Or you're like, and sleep. Yes. Cause you're like, okay, let's get ready for bed. I got you. We're going to do this together. They'll protest for a second, but you're within that 10 minutes, you get them down. You get past that 10 minutes, maybe on a good day, you'll get 12. You're done. You're fucked. They're fighting you all night. They don't want to go to bed. Then you're exhausted. And plus, I'm like, I just, I need at least two hours before I want to pass out to not be concerned about them. You know what I mean? So, so you, how does it work? You walk him into that room and what happens? We brush his teeth, we pee and we get into bed. I, he, he has to, he like gets his sillies out like a little bit. Like I've learned. Cause I used to be like, stop Jack, stop, stop. Gotta get your sillies he out. just, he has to get some energy out. So he like flips around under the covers and does crazy shit. And I stay super chill. Normally I used to be like, stop, stop. Cause I thought like, oh, we're fucked. But I, now that I've given him like 10, 15, 20 seconds to do it, he stops. He talks, he asks me a couple of questions because, you know, we've, we've got, we've always got to ease his mind before bed and they're always random and they're always different. What season are we in? What's tomorrow? Is it going to rain tonight? Like random shit. Who, who's picking me up from school tomorrow? Yeah. And it's always you, right? No. Um, Lately I've been sending my nanny. I just. Uh, oh, she made hot. me, it. she made me the quesadilla of a lifetime. Oh, the bat Norma makes. Mm-hmm. 
best case ideas. Plus we're leaving town so much and we're, she, she's not going to have to work here there. I've like reasoned in my head, like, I'm just going to take care. I'm going to be 24 seven on my kids duty soon for a couple of weeks with traveling. Like I'm taking my afternoons to make my phone calls and get my nails done and do the stuff I know I'm not going to do for almost a month. So yeah, I give myself that, but Norm makes mean quesadillas. So then he comes down. We've at, answered a couple of questions tonight. He goes, cause you know, he comes into our bed or we walk him to the other bed in Bo's room every night, wakes us up every night, sometimes multiple times. And today he promised he was going to go right from his bed to Bo's the bed in Bo's room and not come into our room. Cause we've tried to reason with him. Like, dude, it makes no sense to walk all the way across the house to get us to go back to Bo's. Just walk across and get in. And before he goes to bed tonight, he goes, mommy, I'm going to come into your bed tonight, not Bo's bed. Cause I love you. <laughs> what a bed, creep. I like, How am I going to get mad at him? How am I going to tell him? No. I was like, all right, buddy. I'll see you later. Wait. So does he get out of bed every night to go every to either Bo's scene. room or your room? He never, he, he if he's going to sleep in ours or Bo's regardless, he comes to our room to make us walk him all the way back to Bo's room. And then he sleeps on that little like thing on the ground in Bo's room. Mm-hmm. The mattress on the floor. Yeah. Because he just doesn't want to be alone. He does not want to Has be alone. Has he done one night on his own yet? Like up until six months ago, he was the best. Oh, so it's it's a change. It's a development. Yes. This made me think really quick. I wanted to keep talking about our like bedtimes, like growing up and stuff. And it made me think really quick. How were me and Kasim as house guests? You guys were great. Is I mean, I didn't see you into that. You notice and you go like, oh, that was annoying or like that. They were doing this. And more so me. I was obviously here for much longer. And I drank all your water. That's you just drank all my water. That's the only <laughs> thing you just drank all my water. All of it. Yeah, there was nothing. There was nothing. I was so thrilled to have you guys there. And also, too, by the time you came down, like Cass, you would come at a perfect time where I was like needing to talk to another adult. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We come down at like 10. Yeah. Mink, Mink and I would be there that way. Then too, if I need to do kid stuff, I knew she could like hang out with you or like there was like another person. Then Rob would come out like 12. No, I, I would, I would wake up. I no, was you're right. You're right. 30, 10, but you're I would right. do my hour. Where you would like do your I'd stuff. Good. Yeah. Well situated, you know, I'd want to come out. You said you hadn't brushed your teeth since you saw me last, which was like a week ago. No, I haven't brushed my teeth since last night. <laughs> I was saying I came in from berating Bo about being a liar. And then, I was like, you know what? I don't think I've brushed my teeth today. Because he was like, look how cozy you look. I was like, these are my pajamas from last night. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's eight o'clock at night. So. Yeah. I washed my face, though. I somehow was able to do that. Amazing. So, uh, yeah, we were good house guests. So, and then you have to put Bo to sleep, which is what is, you walk him in, same thing. Does he have to get his sillies out? <laughs> no. He likes to talk. He likes to talk a little bit. And then he just wants somebody to sit in there for five minutes till he gets really close and then he it's fine. And are you like petting them? No, just sitting there. Sometimes, sometimes I'll like play with Bo's hair. Jack wants to hold my hand. Jack holds my hand as he falls asleep. And do you ever fall asleep in there too? Or are you on your phone? What are no. you doing? Oh, usually on my phone. Oh, okay. That's not bad then. And then, so Cass, what, what was bedtime like growing up for you? I didn't have any curfews or anything like that. So there was uh the only thing I remember specifically was I used to sneak out when I was like 11 to 12, I would sneak out and like go drink at the park with like, oh, yeah, the, no. like bad kids, you know? Yeah. Wow. yeah. But I didn't have like, if I was out somewhere, you know, riding bikes, cause it was, you just got bu- around on bicycles. So you would ride bikes and then you would tell your mom, like, oh, I tell my mom, I'll be home by like, eight, you know, and then seven 45 would roll around. I'm still like a half hour away from home. Uh, you got to find a pay phone. Then you're going to drop a dime in the pay phone and then call your mom. And then you, you're like, uh, can I, I can just come home at nine? And then she's like, okay, but dinner's going to be cold. I'm like, I don't fucking care. You know? Yeah. And then I would just, I was just a bad kid. And then you just like ride home in the dark. And then uh, get home and then like you probably stink, you know, from running around, be sweating all day. You've been in the same clothes since like 6 a.m. Um, and then the weekends were like I would just stay over at friends houses like two, three days straight. You know, no one ever came to my house. I never wanted anyone to come to my house because I was like, 
embarrassed about having like an like a family of foreigners you know i'm like i don't want them to see the shit my mom cooks oh, I you that. know I, I i know it's i was so embarrassed but uh it was it was a lot of like let me just go to other friends houses or let me just yeah. be away from my house as much as possible it wasn't like my parents were terrible to me and I had to be away. It was just no, like, it was a kid thing. Then it was the time. Yeah. It was a time. I get it. I remember ha- I had friends of like ethnic backgrounds and I would go to their houses and their moms sometimes we, you know, dress traditionally to whatever their culture was and their house always smelled like different types of food and spices. And I, as a, right. I know from being on the other side, like I loved it. I thought right. it was the coolest thing ever that they were living with this like non-traditional life and it was full and int- like they had identity. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And they, I loved that. I was trying to lose the identity. I know, but I, but I, I saw my friends struggle with that. So I feel for you. I hate that. Yeah. Hate- yeah. And then it was, uh, you know, and then now it's so funny cause it's like, now you walk into that house and it still smells the same as it did when you were a kid, but you're, it's like such a, you're like, Oh yeah, we're having that tonight. And it's Aww. very comforting. And it's, uh, yeah, it's you know, nostalgic. I love, I love bringing people over to, you know, to my house, uh, to me, like, just cause everyone like wants to talk to my mom, you know, cause yeah. she's, she's so funny. So it's, it's, it's come a long way, but it's taken a goddamn lifetime. Jesus. I see. I was going to guess that your bedtime shit was like a very organized thing until you turned a certain age because of how you are now, which is like, sometimes I go to text cast at like nine 30 at night and it's like <laughs> notifications are turned off. Like, yeah. you know? and now you get that alert from Doesn't Apple. that mean nothing though? Cause I send it all the time and then people write me back. You what? Oh no, no. Well, some people, yeah, but it just, it just means that like you're, they're not getting alerted that you're texting. Okay. So they could, they can still go look at their phone. They're on and their see phone. Your text. I see. I see. Yeah. But so, but sometimes it's like, you know, nine P like, I know there's other people where it's like, Oh, midnight and they turn their phone yeah, off to yeah, go to yeah. sleep. Cast them. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's like nine 15. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I like to be, you know, cause I do have to get up early. And so there's just, I like to be in bed early. And then if I can just shut off my phone, I will occasionally glance at it. But for the most part, once I put the do not disturb on, it's like, I won't respond to you um, unless it's the morning time. But I do, I think I have it to where like, if my parents call, it'll come through because they're, you know, it would not, it would probably be important if they were calling me at that, that late, late of a time. I, uh, cause I, th- I thought that like the product of me, not of like having such a weird sleep thing was because when I was a kid, there was never a sleep time. Like I remember being so young and watching, like I knew like every episode of cheers and mm-hmm. like, you know, uh, like honey, your mom never checked to see if you were sleeping. Uh, no, well, a lot, like when I first was growing up, it was in my grandparents. Then when it was my mom's, we lived in a studio. So if my mom was up watching TV, I was up watching TV. Right. And then when we first moved into the third place, I was sleeping in my mom's room. And then, cause I guess we, we went from the studio sleeping in the same room to yeah. like still sleeping in the same room. And then by the time I was in my room, yeah, I was, but even when I was in my mom's room, like it would be, I, I remember like 1am still watching TV wow. and like on a school night, like didn't really. My God, Bo's dream. And kids would always be like, oh, do you see this show? And they would talk about kid stuff. And I'd be like, no, like Norm from Cheer. Like my references would be mm. like always the like, you know, yes. oh, when Alice and like, Ralph, you know, Ralph's going to hit her one day, like, or, you know, whoever. <laughs> and like all these kids were just watching kids shows. Now we I, know why Rob's the way he is. Mm. I did have a TV in my room and then my parents took it out of there because I was like up late watching TV. So they put it in my brother's room, who's six years younger. Um, and I really was into Beavis and Butthead. Uh, and so I would sneak into my brother's room at like whenever it was on like 1030 or 11. And I'd watch episodes of Beavis and Butthead because all the cool kids at school were talking about Beavis and Butthead. I'm like, I've got to watch this show, man. This, this is social suicide if I miss an episode. You know, and I'd sneak in there and like, I'll tell him I'd like, you know, my brother's trying to sleep. I'm like, we got to watch this show. You got to write this fucking wonder years of Cass's life. Like yeah. seriously. Yeah. There's a, tr- there's like a, a, a one page of it somewhere, but uh, yeah, there, there was always, there's always like, <laughs> that's always your answer. There's a somewhere. Yeah. You know, my manager has something. Um, and, uh, but yeah, there's, there was like always that, coming to school the next day and be like, did you watch, did you watch last night? Washing the dog, washing the dog, oh, man, that was such a good episode. And then they'd be like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
I ever tell you, like, I'd always try and like look at how the cool kids were dressing and I would try and copy them. And so back when I was, uh, so this was the nineties. So it was like big baggy t-shirts were popular. Do you remember this phase? Yes. And then big back, big baggy shorts. Yes. But I didn't own, um, big baggy shorts. I just had like, like little khakis. And then I, I would steal my dad's like work shirts. They would say like work shit on them. They would say like Hyatt, you know, or like Marriott hotels, but it was just dope now. Yeah, yes. it would be dope. dope. Oh my god, such good vintage. But yeah, they, like you know, the sleeves shirt. came down to like here, you know. Yeah, yeah. Of but course. then the the shirts were so long they covered up my shorts, so it just looked like <laughs> you were wearing a long t shirt, like a hot chick. You know, and like hot chicks do that. That's what they wear to bed. Yeah. I just couldn't get it right for a while, you know. And then when I did kind of figure it out, like I was like, all right, yeah. I'm gonna get. Like, I remember I laid out my entire outfit for school, first day of school one day, and it was all green. I had green jeans, a green turtleneck, and then green vans. I need a picture. I'm going to need a picture. <laughs> I don't think that picture exists. And I thought it looked so cool. And then I get to school, and everyone's like, hey, Gumby. And I was like, fuck. You know, there was just no way to, there's just no way to win. That's when it's all started. He never went in a pool after that. Just day. promise me. And that's me why I, I don't go into pools. Promise me I get to play like, you can Young play my mom. Kassam's like, no, I can't play your mom. I think we had the same Do conversation. After I want to play the teacher. I want to play like a teacher that like I told really. That story. And then Jamie's like, can I play your teacher? <laughs> I do. Yeah. I want to play yeah. your teacher that like saw yeah. you and believed in you. And you might have had a crush on me, but it was like, yeah. like a really influential person in your life. I, you know, one day I got a brand new bike that my dad bought from fucking on a Walmart or no, maybe Kmart at the time. And I was so excited about it, but I didn't really have any like friends that I could show it off to, you know? So yeah. I drove it, I rode it to school and then uh, I rode it all the way into the classroom and, and show, <laughs> showed it off to my teacher. You did like the back wheel skid into yeah. the classroom. <laughs> and just a I got, but I got there super early. There was no kids there yet. It was just her. I'm like, I got a new bike. Do you want to see it? Do you want to see it? Oh, it's painful. Your your long t-shirt gets caught in the back yeah. and you choke yourself out. <laughs> oh my god. You're in this uh, autoerotic asphyxiation. Yeah, I just uh, choke myself with the, the Marriott <laughs> t-shirt. Yeah, had, there was a lot of that, man. There was a lot of that kind of stuff. I experienced my first moment where I was like, that's only Texas nice or like South, definitely like never New York or whatever, but I went to like a I was on like a full on war path out here going to all these different stores looking for those floss toothpicks, you mm -hmm. know, because like mm -hmm. I can't do regular floss. I'd rather just like lose my teeth. I think they should just stop the selling regular floss altogether when those things it's, exist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When people offer that, like it's the same thing. I'm like, no, that's not what it is. Like people right. in the stores are like, yeah, we have full. Like, I'm like, no, no, no I need the picks. And like yeah. here, some of them are like, we don't even we've never heard of that. Jesus regular Christ. floss should be outlawed it's like you you need like uh half a mile's worth and then you've got to like tie it around your finger and cut off the circulation and then you've got to i mean it is it's an it's archaic. entirely archaic yeah. it is <laughs> archaic it's archaic right <laughs> that just came at the same time uh, have you heard of this have you seen this have you seen this have you heard of this so uh, yeah so I'm, I'm, I, I go into the guy and the guy like sees me like looking around like crazy for the thing and, and like, I don't have anything. So he's like, is this guy stealing stuff? Because I don't have like any items in my hand. And he's like, can I help you? And I'm like, yeah, do you have uh those like floss pick things? And he's like, oh no, sorry, we don't have those. And I was like, all right. And then I was like walking to the front door and I put my hand on the front door and he's like, oh, sir. And I was like, yeah. And he's like, I have one in my bag if you want it. And I was like, uh, I was like, I'm all right. Like, like from his personal collection? You, cons you considered it for a second. Oh, no, 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 no. I just considered his feelings and the, the awkward situation for a second, but there is no universe where that thing was going in my mouth. <laughs> no way. Yeah, no ever. way. Anything from anyone's bag. Jamie, I don't care if it was your bag. If you were like, I have something in my bag, put it in your mouth, I can't do it. You can't do it. So like some random stranger in a gas station? <laughs> oh, no, Jamie, please. It, hey, mister. I got yeah. an extra one in my bag if you need. Mm -hmm. You want to put this in your mouth? <laughs> nah. I was like, I'm all right. Thank you. And he was just like, all right. But yeah, that, by the way, lived in New York 
35 years, like nothing ever even close Mm-mm. to being like, yeah, I, even the like, I'm looking around and he's like, can I help you? I'm like, whoa, what does this guy want? <laughs> you know, like, yeah. what's going on here? But then he's like, yeah, I have one in my bed. Could you imagine? What yeah. a sweet man. Yeah. Yeah. What, so what, what are your days like right now? You're walking around, you're working out, you're going to sweet green. Yeah, I'm learning Austin. I've been playing a lot of poker. Mm-hmm. Uh, poker here is nice. Yeah, Dude. it's good. Because here's the deal. There's bad poker players in um, L.A. and in Vegas. Uh, Vegas is, is kind of dead, but like in L.A. and stuff. But they're miserable. And same thing like Atlantic City. Just people are miserable. Like the poker mm-hmm. rooms out here, man, people are having a blast. Like Aww. people are having a blast. And they're losing money. They don't care. Like it's bring your own beer. This guy had a, a book bag with like Johnny Walker Blue. He's like, anybody want Johnny Walker? There's this other guy who like brings a football every time he plays and like when he wins a hand he just like stands up and like throws it to somebody in the poker room people are like playing yeah it's just like every, people are like hanging out laughing we having need a, a good time. we need a movie about this poker room and all the or a tv yeah. show and all these characters Jesus. but i'm telling you remember i told you there's this vibe here where people work to live they don't live to work people fucking when they're at poker they're like this is i'm gonna have fucking fun and there's a lot of new money in this town that's true too a lot where they're like this this guy next to me was like yeah i was in like venture capital and blah blah blah. he's like my wife got a teaching job here we moved here he's like now i just hang out he's like i go to the lake during the day i pretty much retired and she he's like i I had us build a home right next to the school so she can walk to work and he's like we're living the dream wow that sounds great but like where he was living before this like he had to work every single day to keep like paying his bills and he's like yeah i just moved here and i'm fine yeah. It's pretty it's pretty it's pretty fantastic. Yeah. When we're on the boat and we're driving past a lot of those houses on the lake, I was like, that could be cool. You know, I could get into this water. I'd take my shirt off here. Yeah, fucking Whoa. lake life. It's a thing. It's like it gets you. Yeah. Some of the some of the houses were like showstoppers. We're like, yeah. me and Cassim were in the front of the boat Crazy. with Jack and Bo. And like every like three minutes, we'd be like, Oh, there's Joe Rogan's house. And then yeah. we'd go another three minutes, we'd be like, oh no. That's there's that's Rogan. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. That's Rogan's house. I don't think you can see his. Can you see it from? Like we that? could. Me and Cass. <laughs> oh, yeah, we, saw. we saw it every three houses. We saw Elon there. Musk's house. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Was like very unassuming. I it has to like go into the mountain or something in some like Iron Man shit type way, like because yeah. it didn't look that big from the water. Uh, we've so, built like, this thing has to go like into the fucking <laughs> mountain. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I do feel like I'll I'll be back very soon. I don't know how how long you're planning on staying there, Robbie, but uh, you know, make make room, make room for your boy Cass. You got a two bedroom there. I know one of those bedrooms is for your boy. Oh yeah, you could come whenever mm-hmm. you could pop in, except for this weekend because somebody might be coming to visit me. But whenever you want. Oh, what yeah. another Cass or? Yeah, just another another you know another person maybe maybe that room won't be being used but it would be inappropriate if you were in there let's sure yeah yeah. maybe let's put it that way jamie you know what i was thinking the other day could you imagine if like when me and you were on the pilot of sopranos 25 years ago and we were sitting there like eating craft service or whatever like Mm -hmm. if somebody like if there was a ghost from the future like ghost of christmas future whatever like came over to us and he's like Hey, you know, 25 years from now, like he's going to be staying in your pool house in Texas. We would, like, that's like the craziest thing someone could say. We would have been like, uh, what the fuck? Yeah. You'd be like, why, like, why am I living in her pool house? Yeah. <laughs> what happened to me? <laughs> be like, what the hell are they? But I'd be like, that sounds odd. But he'd be like, oh, it's a real nice pool house. You know, right. let me know. If he saw me concerned, he'd be like, oh, I'm a ghost. I want to. You've got to just be visiting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She has like a little basket for you of CBD creams and all that. Like, okay, what's CBD? And then he just vanishes. You know? You're drinking a bathtub full of water every day. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, it disappears. You ever heard of Mountain Valley? <laughs> <laughs> But how crazy, like, could you imagine nice ghost. on the fucking yeah. pilot of Sopranos? No. Like, you're 16, I'm 12. Like, just a weird, everyone's like, ah, this thing's going to last one episode. Mm-hmm. And then 25 years later, I'm staying in your pool house. And no. you're staying in a pool house. Yeah. Drinking yeah. water. He yeah. lets me stay places here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I also, something okay. about being here, like, I haven't been keeping in touch with anybody and I feel bad about it. Like normally when I'm in LA and I'm in my routine, like I take an hour a day where I'm like, oh, I'll call someone or I'll catch mm. up. And I'm always like on my shit. 
Where like since I've been here, it's well, like, I I'll tell you why. Anyone? I'll tell you why. You went to Miami, and then you had the bachelor party. There was a lot of people. Then coming here that first week, there was a lot of people. It was a lot of action. Lot. It's been a lot for you. Yeah. You need to disconnect for a minute. Yeah, yeah. Don't feel bad. You needed this. You're not, your friendships didn't go anywhere. When you feel recharged and go back to LA, you'll call them. And then these fucking people at Equinox, like uh, I'm staying here in Equinox. And I said to the people, I'm like, oh, can I buy like a week pass? They're like, if this place is for club members only. And they wouldn't even let me. So I'm like, I'm trying to be fit. Guys, they won't even let me. Not even a guest. Not they won't even let me. I was like, you, you so guys. So how are you working out? You people. Just in your apartment? There's a little gym near the place. Yeah, that I'm in. But like. It's a bummer, but I went. For, oh Come my God. here. I went he swatted yeah, mosquitoes most of his day. That's oh, a workout. My place <laughs> is. It looks like a petri dish. Tell her what you told me. Hey. Tell her what so it was like when you opened the door. Some fruit in there? <laughs> yeah, Bozeman coming over and lying to me. What? What? What was it? Well, you told me. <gasps> Do what? you see that animal? Is that a fox? Do you see that fox in my yard right there? This is live. Oh, yeah. Do you I see do. the fox? Oh, Can wow. you turn the camera or no? Is that too no. much of a thing? Wow. A yeah, bird was chasing you, you, it or you, something. After what Did you, you were saying about Kasim's looks earlier, he knew you weren't talking about him when he said, hey, you see that but fox? There was a bird <laughs> yeah, right yeah. next to it. Wasn't that talking crazy? talking about an animal. Yeah. I did see. I saw a bird like swoop in and he was casually walking on the. Uh... Yeah, he's still over there. crazy because I was like, oh, is now that he's in, like, the, Now he's on the grass. Yeah! Wow, this is like uh, sorry, guys. Do, 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 I'm like do, 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 do. Is he still there? Record it on your phone. We'll we'll mix it into the pod. Oh, can you see him? I, you can't. Oh, it's, it's it would dark. be because it's dark outside and everything. Anyway. What, what were we what saying? saying? Uh, oh, you oh. were telling me what it was like. How many mosquitoes there are when you yes. when you open the front door? Oh, I, yeah. Because he was like, "How do those mosquitoes keep getting in?" And I was like, "When I open my front door, just mosquitoes, and they just and it's all white, so you see them like." Yeah. Coming in, I'm like, oh, that sucks. So I bought one of those like electric lantern yeah, things. Yeah, I was going to say, we have one you can take home with you yeah. for a little if you need. I mean, a second the catchies? One, like, yeah. So I've just been like, uh, like as I'm laying down at night, it's like, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, it's, it's like it very satisfying. Good. Yeah. Did I just spit on you? No. Oh, okay. If it's, if you, oh, Cutter used to go every morning and like open it to see how much he That's caught. That's what I would do. And, and it so comes satisfied. with a sweeper and I sweep yeah. him out. Yeah, yeah. It comes it's with a revenge. sweeper. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm sweeping them out, and and every single one I sweep out, I'm like, good. See, you were gonna, you were gonna do. Oh wait, here, can you can you guys see this? Wait. Uh, oh, yeah. that's yeah. mosquito oh, bite. No, I think he I thinks it's or a did spider. Did you fall off a roof? Here, here you want to ask it? Jesus. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, yeah, yeah. Wow. My, a huge bite on my arm. I have no idea what it is. It's so unsexy, and I also mm. I've never felt so unsexy in my life. I went to Target because. Cass knows when I do an Airbnb, I get my own towels, right, Cass? He gets his own towels and usually get your own sheets. Yeah, I had, that was just too much because I had three spots and I was like, just, I had to give in, but it kills me. But I went to go get socks and I swear these are the worst. I can't believe that like this is considered fashion and like other stuff that we I don't think considered it's considered fashion. fashion. Like, I don't think anyone put that on the wall and said, Fashion socks. Let's see them, dude. Put them like, on. These are standard I mean, anklet black socks. But they're just they're like th when you put your sneaker on, they're like baggy. So they're like. But you could have done better in the socks. store. No, not in Target. These are the best ones there. They're Hanes. <sighs> shout it's shout speaking out. Speaking as if they're like Prada. But I'm saying well, the, Hanes is the Prada of Target. We're looking for a sock sponsor. Is it Stance. Nice? Bombas would be great. Bombas. Wow, you say that wonderfully. Bombas. Didn't Bombas. I get you a pair of Bombas? Yeah, but yeah. they weren't socks. They were like uh, sock slippers. Like, yeah, they were like uh, house shoes. House shoes, something like that. Yeah, because I would see Castle put them on when I'd go hang out, and I was always admiring them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm like those look wonderful. Do we uh, we have any email? What should we do now? Yeah, I got an email. Let me just read the first uh, one here on the top. This one's from. from Josh, uh, okay. subject is a big thank you. Hi, guys. I don't have any questions to ask, but I just wanted to thank you all for making my days a lot better when listening to your podcast. I deal with severe depression on a daily basis, which makes the week very hard to go through sometimes. And when I listen to you guys speak and joke around with each other, it's such a great stress reliever for me and even helps me curb some of the negative thoughts I have. So again, thank you. Sincerely, sincerely Josh. 
Thanks, Josh. Love you, Josh. I'm sorry that now instead we're just reminding you that you have negative thoughts, Josh. <laughs> Normally we're <laughs> distracting you from that, but right now we're reminding you of it, which is kind of no. odd. Release your thoughts, Josh. Thank you for sharing yeah. and being vulnerable. That's um, super cool that you we make you happy. You here's somebody happy. here's somebody who loves the fact that it was just you two on the pod the week before. This oh, is Oh, uh, that's come on. If you guys but this is from Philip Phil? from Long Island. Do it. Oh, uh, the Phillip tables says, are turning. That was Casimir's boy. That's right. Whoa. Yeah, well, let's see. Let's see if he maintains mm. being my boy here. This mm. is by no means a dig at you, Cass, because mm. you really, because you are really, really great on the pod. But it was so special seeing a pod with just Jamie and Rob. If anything, because of the dynamic of the two of them growing up together on one of the greatest TV shows in history. And to see them now as full-fledged adults and how close they've stayed over the years. Case in point, Rob eating Jamie's leftovers from her plate in the restaurant. <laughs> it was also interesting because of Rob staying at Jamie's house and hearing about their time together. Robert, thank you for showing that large water bottle with the motivational words, as it will inspire me to drink more water. Best, Phil. P.S. Rob, I'm like your friend. I was never a fan of peanut butter and chocolate together. Figures. <gasps> I could see it, but my best friend feels that way and somebody who, uh, you know, Phil from Long Island. So what do you say? Thanks, Are we, you guys fans of Phil? We've always been fans of Phil. Yeah, Listen, uh, I, he's, I, he's still my guy, uh, even though he so much slighted a, me today. That I have a problem with Phil. It's that you are like mosquitoes to my apartment with Phil. You're just so <laughs> you know, like there could be 12 emails and you just go right to Phil from Long Island. You, you love them. You I, play favorites. I was shocked that Bert, who, who, who had the negative thoughts? Josh. 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 I was Bert. surprised Josh snuck in there. He snuck he in. Snuck in. Josh <laughs> snuck right snuck in. in. You, you snuck in, Josh. Way to go, uh, bud. I got another email here from Sarah. It says, hey there, how's it going? My uh, name is Sarah, and I'm from Mission Viejo. So why'd, <laughs> why'd you say uh oh? Yeah, say uh oh. Is it? The, it's just the way I read it, Jamie. I felt like a bad email was coming. No, no, no. It's good. It's very complimentary. I don't know why I said that. It came from like a place I can't describe. Wow. Uh oh. Sorry. I'm from Mission Viejo. <laughs> um, my parents first got me into The Sopranos when I was a freshman in college, and I was hooked after the first episode. Let me tell you, your show got me through a lot of one. Uh, all nighters in architecture school. <laughs> one night stands. <laughs> one you thought, one night stands. <laughs> that would be so. That's a big. Yeah, that's a, a big mistake. Room and then yeah. Sorry, Sarah. A lot of all nighters at okay. architecture school. So thank you. Seven years later, I'm now showing my boyfriend for the first time, and he's obsessed. Aww. I do have to apologize though, Cassim. I live under a rock, and I didn't know who you were until I found this podcast. That being said. Love what you bring to the show and can't get enough of your witty comments, funny stories, and constant one-liners. Thank you. I got into the podcast a little late. I'm only on episode eight, but that just means oh I'll be gosh. set for a while in regards to content. Yay. I don't really have any questions for you all, but I just wanted to say this. Jamie, you are my favorite character on The Sopranos, and I think that's because I was Meadows' age at the time I was watching it. Your character felt very relatable, and I love that. Rob, I've always had a little crush on you. I know you probably get that a lot, but I just wanted to throw that out there. Don't worry. The BF knows. Kasim, although I didn't know you before listening to the pod, you are the perfect cherry on top, and I always love hearing your stories throughout the day. Keep them coming. Anyway, thank you for being genuine and real. You guys are great. Talk soon. Thank you, Sarah. That was a nice one. Huh? Thanks, Sarah. Oh, my God. You're only on episode eight. You are you don't even know us Of yet. this pod? Yeah. There's a lot. Wow. You don't even know us yet. I we didn't even really hit back. our groove until like episode 100. 40, 30 or 40. Or we something. weren't even on 100, Jamie said. Yeah. yeah. Maybe when, 100. Uh, when we... Uh, I feel like when the video started, we like something happened. Yeah. For yeah. me. Sure. See, I, but I feel when like... When we started first... hanging out in the summer. Yes. Yeah, that's yes. true yes. too. Yes. But I, I also feel like our first one was like shockingly... Like it was like an hour and 30 minutes. Yeah. And we were like, are we done? But I couldn't... like. I remember the beginning was like, oh, I think somebody asked about like Vegas. And then like, I don't remember. Because I guess I was. I remember walking away from the first one being like, okay, is this like, because I literally, I remember driving there and Cutter's like, what is, what is this podcast? And I'm like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I literally don't know. I'm going to sit down and talk to the two of them. And now he asked you the same thing today and you have the same answer. Yeah. I don't oh, know. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just going to sit and talk to the two of them. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, yeah. let's just say, yeah, you'll you'll really, really like it more and more the more you listen to it. I think. I, I think, think so too. I think people notice that we imagine we if she like this. writes us in a few weeks and she's like, "Ugh, you guys went down right. hell you guys right. for that whole mask thing." <laughs> yeah. Braddock, what the fuck is Braddock USA? Wait, Jamie, here's a good question: If you if you found out if you met somebody who's just like this who said, "Hey, I w- I love your podcast. I was on episode. I'm on episode eight. Like, I, I I'm I'm gonna listen to all of them. What's in store? Like, what would you tell them? What they have in store? Oh, you're in for a wild ride. Oh, yeah. You you are. You have no idea. I am going to take you all over the map with me. Mm-hmm. We are gonna learn all about Rob and his not having sex forever. Oh and he yeah, sex again, and he starts mm-hmm. dating, and he ate sugar for a little while, and then he stopped, and then we had COVID, and Kasim got went back to work, and him and uh-huh. Jamie got to know each other, and mm-hmm. they have the same sex language, and Jamie talks about her kids, <laughs> and they get emotional, and they get it deep, and they get funny, and they get reminiscent, and Jamie and Rob have cool guests from The Sopranos, and they have cool friends on, and they make fun of each other and they're gotten their synergy so good. Wow. Wow. Is that the intro? Is that the Instagram clip? If we could ever get back on the Instagram? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah well, summing up pajama pants. Wow. Was that it? That was yeah. great. Did I leave anything out? Can you do it again? Just shorter, faster and go. <laughs> no. I, I think, I think it's incredible that we started this pod two years ago or something, two years and change. And it's like the three of us hadn't worked in years and years and years. And Kasim has his dream job now. Jamie is a regular on a network show living in Texas. And uh, I'm hanging in there. You're doing great. I'm hanging in there, guys. Things are going to turn up for you. You know, they're going to get. <clears throat> that just means hang in there, guys. So, because Cass is preparing for it to get bad for him, right? Because that's what you guys said. Yeah. When things well, are life bad for me, for, things are great for Rob. But that's right. why. Well, that's why we we're the yin and the yang. That's another thing to look forward to in this podcast. Yeah, K- Kasim actually the real pendulum me, swing. Kasim called me, you know, a while back and was like, uh, "Yeah, you know, I'm not having a good uh, like uh, just everything, you know." And I'm like, "Oh yeah," and he's like, "You things must be great for you," and I was like. It's actually like the best week of my life. <laughs> like, you know? I was like, yeah, this is incredible. Like, how- And you know he's what? Like, yeah, it's no. like, I love to hear, I love, he's like one of the few people where I'd be like, of good. course, you know, it's like, I, I, there's not a, like a, not even a, a little bit where I'm like, just of course. stub your toe or something, you know? Yeah. It's, uh, it's quite the dynamic we have, but yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a good one. I got one more email here this one comes with uh that's it let me just make sure he's not trying to sell us something here um we only had five emails <laughs> no there there's there's more you know there's the like this our, one this guy's trying to sell us something so i uh, i yeah let, let me, me tell just, you jamie from from sitting over here i could tell you what it's like when you're sitting over there the difference so here's what you see you log on to our email and it'll say like you know debbie from louisiana uh, Phil from Texas. And then there will be 37 emails that are like, we want you to act like, now. Uh, like a like lot spam. of spam. Spam. But then there, it's odd because there'll be like your regular spam. And then there's like special pajama pants spam. Where it's why, like, why aren't you unsubscribing? Uh, you you got to unsubscribe to each one. So give me know. the phone one day. Just give me the phone. Yeah, one you don't day. have enough to do. You, uh, let, let no, us it's just right. like the, I, that's like something I can because easily zone out. And do. But then because it's easier coming. to just like bulk delete. And then I I have an email that's out from uh, from that email to like a, a one guy who's like I forget his exact name on Instagram, but it was like a Mister In Between something that we were trying to get the Venmo thing hooked up and we couldn't. We kept missing each other. He's like, I'm going to try and set something up because he's in Australia. And, but he won the one of the giveaways. And oh, I kept okay. trying to like get it to him, and it was a problem. And this, but when I get back to LA, I'll make sure I figure it out. But I tried yeah. to send him an email on that email, and I don't think he ever wrote back. There's, you know, yeah. If you guys, and by the way, our email is askpajamapants at gmail dot com. If you want to send us an email, I'll either. send us one. Send us one. Um, also, you know, we're probably due for a dating profile uh, evaluation. Yeah, you guys can take a screen cap of your entire. Bumble or Hinge or Tinder profile, send it in, and we'll do you a free service of talking about the things. It that really are is and a not free working. service. 
It's very sometimes free. We, sometimes we say <laughs> it's very free. It's if it was a bi- if it was a business that the three of us made, what would we call it? We would call verified. Wow, the way, and yeah, you would say it like that. That'd be great. Yeah, it, it part we we kind of take people down a peg, but like in a in a fun way, you know. They call it the humbling, you know, like a mm. <laughs> the service. Mm. But I don't want it to be like I because the we do humbling. talk a lot about. Yeah. That would be a good SNL skit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The humbler. The humbler. Yeah. Did you take it to the humbler? I, I told Rob I have a, an idea for uh, a, an outdoor yoga studio when I, when we were out there called Mr. Yeah. Misters. This and is it's yoga. And you, to. Yeah, this is good. <laughs> this is what I was telling him. But then, you know, what? You, what's great about you is like, you thought about it and then you gave me pointers about the business. You know you what I mean? Feedback. What yeah. are some of the lines I say before I say stuff to you that you love? Oh, and by the way, oh, and by the way, yeah, (laughs) yeah. yeah, That's one of my things. And there's another one. There's another one. Yeah. 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 But the, oh, and by the way, I love when he says, oh, and by the way, in the beginning of a a sentence, because it's like, I know he's going to yes and me, you know, and I get excited. Uh I'm like conditioned (laughs) to get excited about it. Yeah, because I'm like, oh, and by the way, at Mr. Misters, what you could do is you, know, yeah. you could have a. That's funny. Yeah, that was. I wanted to have a Mr. Right Misters. Yeah. It's like <laughs> hot <laughs> yoga, and there's <laughs> Misters, right? There's Misters on you. Yeah. And, yeah. and then your idea was to only do the that Misters. That defeats and, the purpose of hot yoga. Well, it's like it would be and outside. That's my, that was okay, my thought. So, but it's Amy. outside, so it's not hot yoga. Well, it could be warm. In Texas, yoga. it is. Yes. Well, and my thought was, Jamie, instead of so, being so negative to our boy, because, you know, oh, he's at, <laughs> I didn't. Yes. Oh, I yes. Sorry. No, but I said to him was I go, I like your idea. I think it's a yes. good idea. Yes. But what you should do is at the end of a sequence, then you get misted instead yeah, like of like a reward. Constant miss. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, when you hit that last pose, mm-hmm. bang, you That's get missed nice. it. Mr. 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 Uh, Mr.'s yoga. Copyright. Yeah. Copyright. Yeah. We put it. We're we got Patent it. Patent trademark. I just Pending. filed it. So Pending. nice try. Nice yeah. try. Yeah. Um, when are you coming home, Robbie, do you have a plan? No, I haven't made a plan yet. Uh, I had someone who's coming to visit me who uh, in Texas, who unfortunately got COVID and I kind of just want to keep hanging out here and poker's great. And I like it here. Mm-hmm. And there's besides you, there's not much to go back to LA for, but um, I'm going to LA next week. When? Tuesday. I might be leaving Tuesday, maybe Wednesday. Uh, how long are you in LA for? You just want to have dinner at the airport. We're going or to three days, and then Cutter and I have a wedding in Northern California. So we're leaving the kids with his mom, but we're staying at a hotel. <laughs> she probably shouldn't announce where we're staying <laughs> on the podcast. <laughs> we forget we're pod. We're sometime. staying at a hotel in LA so for wait, a couple of days on, with the boys. Wait, while we're while we're pod, and this makes for great pod. We're just gonna pull up the. the I'm there the 31st to the sixth. 31st, okay, because I think I'm leaving here the first. Oh, okay, but. We'll see. 34 people are listening to the pod right now. Jamie's in the air. Lawson's going to get a lot less cooler. No, that's a babysitter. Her her calendar linked with mine by accident. Whoa. What the fuck? Holy shit. It's her babysitting calendar. Like, it's not like lunch with Susie. You know, it's like, Mm. you know what I'm saying? Susie. 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 All right. Well, I look forward to seeing, maybe seeing you next. Oh, yeah. Rob Rob and I said that we could be. We could make a children's book about how about lying and if you you get bitten by bugs and just write all different scenarios and that's what we always oh, Sally. Like Sally lied to her teacher about her homework and she went home and tarantulas ate her in her bed. And you turn the book and the kid is just covered in bugs in her bed. You know, and it's like you see that, Bo? It's like yeah. yep. There were scarier yeah. books when we were younger, like those uh scary stories to read in the dark. You know what my dad told me Who's is bumps? A- well, goosebumps too, but the scary stories with the like watercolor artwork with like the guys with like the decaying face. You'll know it Terrible. if you if you Terrible. see it. Terrible. But uh, those, some my, of those raw doll characters weren't too sexy. No, and fucking and Matilda, forget Oof. about it. Jesus, my dad told me when I was a kid to um because I used to bite my nails and he said and and he said if you swallow your nail, Ooh. it'll grow inside yes. you and it'll pierce your organs. And from that moment on, I stopped biting my nails, uh, which is, and I still don't got great cuticles, but I went to school the next day and I was telling kids like, guys, don't bite your nails. It'll grow inside you. And kids were like, no, that's not true. You fucking idiot. That was another one of 
me as a mm. kid, what a fucking mess. But uh, that's one of those lies right your parents there. tell you, you know, so if we're telling our kids lies, that might be one I tell my kids. Jamie, as a teacher, you you would have to tell them like, oh, no, listen, stupid. Yeah, that would be a that would be a very special episode of Cass with <laughs> Cass, young special, Cass and his stupid. teacher. A very special Today episode. Today had a very special episode of young Cass. Why stay after class for extra credit, little Cass? I was No, oh. that's not who I'm playing. I was told. <laughs> that's the fantasy sequence. <laughs> And then that's what the little kid wants. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. That's that's your first wet dream. Do you need some apple juice? Yeah. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Yeah. The uh, I was told as a kid that if you swallow watermelon seeds, a watermelon will grow in your stomach. Oh, I heard that one, too. Yeah. Yeah. And And I would always watch people who could like eat watermelon, just spit out the seeds or even better sunflowers. When I would see people eat sunflowers and spit out the seeds, I'm like, how the Fuck. I can do that, dude. It's a how snack activity. I like forced myself to learn how to do it as a kid because it's I saw so some cool. cool kid do it. You know, yeah, does like, it. it's yeah. real cool. I'm just yeah. I would just chew it up and spit all of it out. Yeah, I don't know how you tell the difference between the seeds and the you you keep them all on one side and you bring one over to the other to crack and eat and then you spit it out. That is a lot of work. But then it seems like when it's they actually spit, pretty. It's just not that when you get in the, the rhythm of it, it's it's a real it's real fun. It seems like when they spit out, though, they're spitting out a bunch of stuff, not one at a time. You can spit one shell at a time or some people can like wait until they have like enough. But usually it's like you take eat the seed, you spit the two halves out, eat the seed, spit the two halves out. So some people could have three separate compartments in there where they have this the seeds. Yeah, I don't I don't like that method. Yeah, I don't like that method. Wow. But sometimes I've had to do that. Right in. Have a, <laughs> yeah, please send us at aspartamfans at gmail.com. Uh, that's going to do a pod. You guys, yeah, if we you're, talked so long about that. Yeah, we did. What a way to end it. Uh, subscribe if you're on YouTube. Click the notification <laughs> bell. Our videos go live every Tuesday. We're on Instagram. Jamie and I are on Twitter and Instagram. Rob's off the grid. Do not try and get a hold of him. Only way is to write in ask for at pants at gmail.com um, and support the sponsors that support the show. And that's how we keep uh, coming back every week. Okay, bye.